Um, so, SmackDown. We opened, as we usually do, with uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey coming out to be unlikable. <laughs> um, so, that's exactly what they did. They come out, they talk more shit about Paige being past it and so on. Again, it would make sense if they were building up to Paige coming back, which they clearly aren't. Um, and then, it, here's the thing, right? And this is very petty of me, Carl, but I'm going to have to point it out anyway. They come out moaning about Paige, saying she thinks she can book us in a match to do this, and she thinks she can put us against each other. And I'm sat there thinking, last week they were very clear that Paige did not book this match. This was not a Paige decision. All Paige did was announce it. That is clearly what she said to them as well. She said, I wanted to be the one to announce this match. She never booked it. She hasn't got any powers to book it. So... Why are they coming out going, she thinks she can do this to us? It's like, well, she didn't do anything to you other than tell you. Like, yeah. technically, technically, someone else booked this match. She had no power at all and to her own her own statement last week. But they're acting like it's a personal thing and Paige has put them in this position. And it's like, have you forgot what you said? Because like, I, th- I found it odd last week that they were very specifically saying, I'm not booking the match. I'm announcing this match. I want to be the one to announce this match. It's like, well, okay, would it have made a difference if you booked it? Like, yeah. Like, I don't um, want to. I don't want to like repeat myself, but I think I think they've WWE have kind of cornered themselves here into the fact that they've they've had authority figures on so prominent for so long that now they don't have any, and so it's not clear anymore how matches get fucking made. You know, they'll throw a contract signing together out of fucking nowhere with fucking Jerry the King or someone officiating it. You know, yeah. does, so does Jerry the King make the matches now? Like, I don't understand that like, you've got Gronk saying, "Oh, I can't make a match," and the next minute it gets made, and then Paige uh, wanting to announce yeah. a match, and it's like, who's making the fucking matches? It, just, it doesn't make any sense. It, it, yeah, they're, they're really confused about their own their own sort of booking, as it were. Um, so ultimately, this segment, uh, they had a moan about Paige, they had a moan about this booking, which again, I've had me gripe about that bit. But um, then we were interrupted by Lacey Evans, who basically said she's going to beat them up, but she did it with a southern twang. <laughs> uh, then uh, well, we had Naomi then come out and um, I'll be honest I don't know what it was about Naomi and, and Sasha Banks talking up to each other but they suddenly turned very street and very ghetto with it it's even got a oh hell no from Sasha and it's like you, you almost pick up with stereotypes there guys that was a bit weird because um, they don't normally talk that way so that I found that a bit strange and then then we, we basically land everyone slowly comes out and then Tamina comes out and it's very much like actions speak louder than words, and then weirdly attacks Naomi and Lacey, but doesn't go for Bailey and Sasha. She lets them walk out of the ring and slowly walk away. Don't know why she left them two alone. Are they trying to suggest there's going to be a bit of friendship going on there? I really don't know. Um, so she laid out the other two, and then that was that. I think there was some genuine fear from the group when Tamina entered the ring, just because they thought she was probably going to botch and fucking hurt someone like she normally does. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know she she's made her actual return and uh, you know that was the little build up to this mania match anyway. Uh, do you have any I thoughts? To be it? fair, yeah, I mean to be fair to them, it was a really good time to bring you know Tamina back because you know she got the same crowd reaction on SmackDown then that she would have got any you know in front of any live audience. So um, <laughs> I think it was yeah. it was a good seamless way to bring her back. Really, oh yeah, I, just yeah. Don't, you could, I don't understand you could really what's <laughs> How can someone be there for so long and have zero amount of fucking overness to them whatsoever? Like, she is literally just only there because she's Jimmy Snooker's kid. And, like, you know, she's not the only one to be there because their dad is a former wrestler. But at least, whether we like them or not, at least you you feel something for them. Tamina, you're just like, as you've said, the only thing you, f- you feel around Tamina is fear that she's going to fucking kill someone. By mistake. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know what it is about it. It, it like the, if you have to describe it, it's just meh. Like I don't hate or 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 anything. It's just eh. She's there. <laughs> she's not making any waves in the women's division. She's around, and yeah, she might end someone's career. Whoops. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. I think from this day forward, we should call her to meh. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 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 Um, yeah, so so that segment ends, um, and then we move on to the the Gulak versus Shinsuke match, which again another confusing self booking made by the by the people themselves. There was no authority figure who put this together, but this match had the stipulation that if Gulak won, then Brian would get a shot against Zayn for the title. 
very strange stipulation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and guess what? Gulak won. So we now oh have another match God. at Mania. We have a match at Mania f- official now because they said it was um, <laughs> that Zayn is going to fight Daniel Bryan for the title. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with this match. Again, I don't want to move away from SmackDown and start speculating on Mania because we're going to do that at another time. But um, are we realistically meant to expect some sort of decent match from Zayn in which you'd realistically think he'd win? Mm. I don't know. Um, so I don't know. Potentially, are they going to do it with um, there's some sort of shenanigans? Uh, and that's why Zayn keeps the title, or are we going to put the strap on on Daniel Bryan, which I think would be a bit needless. I really don't know what they're going to do with that match. We I can mean, speculate I hope that he doesn't wear a strap on, but you know it is WWE, so I mean it could be his next gimmick. He's uh, he's struggling at the minute. <laughs> it could be uh, Gulak could be his gimp. <laughs> yeah. I said I was going to fuck them up, and I didn't mean it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I. The the stipulation was a bit odd that the two people in the match were, were determining someone else's match. Um, the fact that they put that together themselves and again, there was no, no one to ratify it, but apparently the Gronk can't make a match. Uh, it, all very fucking messy. All very messy. Um, so we move on to a backstage segment with uh, Angry Otis. He's Angry Otis now. He's not the happy-go-lucky <laughs> Otis that we normally know. He's angry. Uh, and he confronts Ziggler, and um, again we we end up with another match for for Mania, uh, because again that's how it works. Yeah. I don't know what the stipulation is for the match, but I think winner gets Mandy. Is that is that where I think you know? um, I think I read somewhere it's going to be Mandy on a pole match, so she's just oh. going to be literally pole dancing throughout. I think. Oh right, so I thought I thought you meant like whose pole is she going to be on? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so you know it's a. It was weird actually because it, it, they made a point of being like um, they're not gonna fight over there, but obviously they are, and uh, you know she's obviously gonna go to the one who wins because the other one will be fucking flattened. So, um, and sadly, it's it's another uh, Ziggler is playing the heel here, and ultimately the win should go to Otis. But it's another classic example of Ziggler selling somebody as a monster and taking the loss for the greater good, and uh, that's that's Ziggles for you. <laughs> Fair play to him, you know, in, like in a real sense, falling away from kayfabe, he's the heel, you know, blah, blah. Uh, in a very real sense, he's just there to put people over, isn't he? Um, and I mentioned this with um, with Mick Foley, like he, he gets the best out of other wrestlers in their matches. And Ziggler kind of has an element of that where he, he'll sell a move and he'll, he'll put someone across really well, but almost to his own detriment. He doesn't seem to be getting any heat from it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think uh, he's he's always been like a cell monkey, Annie. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Wh- whether it's in the ring or whether it is for for storyline purposes, so um, you're, you're gonna have to assume that Otis is gonna um, squash him literally <laughs> and get yeah. get the get the revenge. <laughs> I I think that's the natural end to that sort of, st- and it should end at Mania, but I think that's the natural end for the feud. Well, I think it's gonna be a uh, a mate. I'm not, I'm not sure. Is is she fire or is she desire? Oh no. Well, <sighs> Uh, she's got to be fire, surely. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I did forget to mention that that they made it quite clear that that Sonya's involved in this sort of betrayal with Ziggler. Mm. Um, yeah. So again, there's going to be something to that as well. Mm. Um, so we move on to um, to and you're well aware of this segment, Carl, because I want to make a quick mention <laughs> to your absolutely stellar video that you put up earlier. Uh, but we move on to Elias and uh, uh, doing his song uh, about Corbin, in which he calls him a Ted a couple of times. <laughs> um, and then Corbin interrupts, and uh, we have a reenactment of the uh, Mufasa versus Scar scene from The Lion King. Um, and weirdly, and I don't often say this, this was probably the the highlight of the night as far as uh, segments go, and it involved Corbin. It's a it's it's a weird thing to to say, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. <laughs> like, when's he ever been a highlight of the night? I'm I'm, I'm genuinely <laughs> shocked. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a good segment. Elias doing his bit, but then it had that that big spot. And I honestly don't know. I'd be interested to go back and watch it again just for the filming angle of it because I don't know how the how he he definitely couldn't have landed that because he landed on the concrete as it were. Um, yeah. So I, it'd be interesting to see how the how they film that. I'm assuming it was done well with angles because he, he hits him and he drops from quite a height onto concrete, and it's like 
yeah, it was done well because it looked looked like it happened. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, um, I'm I'm guessing that that's the luxury of not having a studio with like an actual live audience. There, I think it looks like they uh, taped it over several parts where you must have fell and landed on like a crash mat, and then they yeah, resume man. the film and where he's like sprawled out on the concrete. That's the joy of it. I was thinking about this before, you know, um, because there's not going to be any botches. We're not going to see any botches for for a good while now because it's all. So if they fuck it up, they film it again. <laughs> no. I mean, it's it's an interesting point. I think um, I don't know what how WWE are doing it. I know for Dynamite, the Darby Allen match was filmed um, previously, um, and the stuff with Hardy um, making his entrance to the ring was obviously filmed half an hour before while the Derby match was being shown, but everything else was live. So I don't know whether because I know there must be bits of. Um, the SmackDown stuff that's live, because obviously we had that issue where they stopped wrestling during the commercial break and stuff. So I think mm. there'll be bits that they still do, maybe, live, but um, I know they are filming a shitload of stuff, aren't they, um, in advance, so I don't know well, how yeah, to be fair, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's unprecedented, isn't it? It's going to be an interesting few months, to be honest, because there's no one knows how long this is going to go on for. Um, they're going to get as much as they can done. Uh, again, there's a little bit I'll go into on the on the ringside report on that, but um, yeah, it's it's it, it's strange, it's unusual, it's um, it's not the setup we're used to, but uh, sadly, it's the one we're gonna have to get used to, I guess. Um, so right, so we move on to um, Asuka versus uh, Alexa. Sorry, did you hear Alexa just go off there? <laughs> what an unfortunate. Uh, I'm gonna call her Bliss for the rest of the segment. Um, so Asuka and, and Bliss uh, had a match we had Nikki Cross on commentary um, and essentially it was a decent match um, and Bliss took the win which meant that uh, we are now having a tag match at Mania for the titles um, but again the only thing I want to mention on it really other than it being a you know, straightforward match decent match um, was the fact that uh, Asuka's coming out by herself again, and I'm not quite sure why that is, whether it's a, a limitation thing or Kairi Sane's actually not around at the moment. I don't know, but it seems like she's going to be there for the tag match at Mania, so uh, who knows what, what the deal is with that. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, there's not much to write on about on that. Do you have any notes on it? Or? Um, I mean, I, I just thought uh, Bliss was, was fantastic again. Uh, some of the stuff she was doing with uh, kind of mimicking um, Asuka and stuff like that um just really good character work and i think uh N- nikki cross on commentary she's just fucking off red and she I thought, I thought there was a funny bit with her and michael cole where he was like uh, you know social distancing get off <laughs> <Where she tried to bug-up laughs> oh yeah yeah. Um, yeah i just uh I, I, I quite like everything that, that those guys do so um i'll be looking forward even though it's not exactly amazingly built up shall we say but i'll be looking forward to that match and hopefully we see a Kind of a bliss cross applesauce win, um, potentially at Mania. I I want to see that. I, it's nice to see uh, Bliss back in the ring, but um, I think that the strap should be on them for a while as well. They're a good tag team, and there's going to be an inevitable betrayal or separation in some way. But uh, I think they're probably going to push. Uh, this is my theory that they're going to push Cross as a heel at some point, and she's going to turn on it. But mm-hmm. uh, it'd be nice to see them have the have the straps for a while as well. Mm-hmm. Um, then. Oddly, we had a very short Uso segment in which they're hyping the match later on against the New Day and saying, yeah, we're mates, but we're going to beat them, basically. Um, kind of unnecessary, but there it is. <laughs> um, and then we had a recap of the WrestleMania 32 match of Triple H versus uh, Roman Reigns. And um, yeah, I'm not going to say much about that because we've all seen it. We all saw it fucking years ago. So um, it was followed, though, by Triple H. And this is where I'm going to mention SmackDown's word of the day, Carl, <laughs> was uh, intense or intensity, right? Because okay. we, cut, we cut to a little bit of a, a promo on, on Triple H uh, talking about Reigns and Goldberg because he is one of the only, or uh, is the only man to have, have faced both of them. And um, did you know that they are they, they're both intense? They both have intensity. <laughs> And it's all very intense. Did you know that? Because um, <laughs> according to my intensity counter, Triple H mentioned that six times in a two-minute segment. So they're intense. But the weird thing is, he's basically he's using the word wrong because he's saying 
Goldberg's intensity is is very very there, very sudden, very quick, and very immediate. Whereas Roman Reigns' intensity builds. So if Roman can um, can outlast Goldberg's intensity and the match goes longer than Goldberg's intensity lasts, then then Reigns' intensity will build and he'll take the win. And I'm like, Triple H, you're talking about stamina. It's stamina. It's not intensity. <laughs> it's stamina. Goldberg's got no stamina. That's what you're trying to say. But in a roundabout way, if if you can get more than five minutes out of the man, he's fucked. That's what Triple H was saying. So um, <laughs> there you go, Roman. Just, you know, wait him out. Get in there for five minutes. Run around the ring. Fuck it. Knacker him out. Whatever. Um, but yeah, I would love just... to see that, you know. Just someone <laughs> making Goldberg run around until he's just like... You know, he just has a heart attack. And then... Blowing out and tired, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, he kept using the word intensity wrongly as far as I'm concerned because he, he was clearly talking about stamina. But um, yeah, it, it, okay, fair enough. He's faced them both and he, he seemed to put his money on Roman, which sounds like the WWE motto anyway. <laughs> but, mm. uh, there you go. And then we jump from that to um, the New Day doing a backstage segment, I think purely because the Usos has got to do a backstage segment. Uh, in which they hyped the match um, and again two very short segments about a match that's going to happen shortly and I'm like just get on with the fucking match then what are these for these are pointless um, uh, so we quickly please pass that on to the Firefly Funhouse um, do you know what I don't know other than the only real purpose of the Firefly Funhouse this week was to to sort of basically move into booking this um, on location match because he wants to have a, a Firefly Funhouse match with John Cena now. Um, and I think, again, this is largely to deal with the problem of, of where do you film these things? Um, how do you deal with the um, the, 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 current, the COVD stuff? And uh, it, I don't know, you can tell that they're having to do a lot of on location stuff for that reason, but the Firefly Funhouse was trying to book it. And to be fair, Ray's a good salesman, so we put it across like this is this is how it has to be, and this is what he wants, and this is where he's going to take John Cena. He's going to, you know, um, and I believe we're going to get a response from John the following week as to whether he accepts that. And I don't know what'll happen if he doesn't, you know. Like, <laughs> no, I, oh, I just I I, kind of want to see that once. We go, we're going to do this, and and they just go no, <laughs> because this is the weird thing again. Without moaning about booking again too much, because wrestlers can apparently book their own matches. They always have to happen for some reason. Like, so, you know, I could walk out to the middle of the ring and go, "I'm going to challenge you for your Intercontinental Championship, Zane," and he has to say yes for some reason. Why can't he just come out and go, "No, I'm not fucking <laughs> doing that." I mean, it's it, it's very true. Like, um, like the, the the way this match started in the first place with the uh, Goldberg and Reigns was them go. He's like, "I'm next," and then they were. WWE were like, okay, I guess this match is happening at WrestleMania. And about three weeks later, they were like, okay, now we'll do a contract signing. What? Yeah. <laughs> Make yeah. Sense. And um, to be fair, you know, I, we mock uh, Reigns and Goldberg. Reigns just coming out and saying, I'm next. Look at the uh, the booking for, for, as much as I love Bray Wyatt and John Cena, and I'm looking forward to the match, and, and Bray Wyatt's great. Um, the match was booked by The Fiend coming out and just pointing. There wasn't even a word said. It was just point. Point and, and then not, a point literal and big fucking tip of the cap to a <laughs> literal fucking yeah. hell. He so almost that, was, that felt like a, almost a challenge. Like, can we book a match without using words? <laughs> so, fair play, they did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so again, typical Funhouse segments. It was um, somewhat playful, then it got very intense. He, he threw Rambling Rabbit in a blender at one point. So, you know, kind of fucked up. Um, <laughs> but ultimately leading to this this is where he wants the match. He wants it to take place in the Firefly Funhouse, and it's it's for John to say yes or no, which he will say yes, obviously. Um, and then we move on to Miz and Morrison um, come down there on commentary for the next match, which surprisingly has been built up throughout the fucking night um, as the New Day versus the Usos. Um, so this match basically kicks off good bit of back and forth, and then it ends up with everyone outside the ring, Miz and Morrison laying into some people uh, to the point that the ref has to toss the match out because of the interference. And then um, Cole, inevitably, in the midst of the chaos, says, excuse me, excuse me, fellas, uh, I know you're all beating each other up, can I have a moment? And they all stop, because, you know, naturally you would when, when Michael Cole asks you to do something, you fucking do it, apparently. <laughs> um, 
So he then says, right, I've had a, a the the peop, random people in my ear have just told me that uh, there's a match been booked. So someone's booking matches. Uh, the, the voices in Cole's head are booking matches. Um, and they're booking a, a ladder match, which is going to be a triple threat ladder match between Miz and Morrison, the Usos and the New Day. So rendering the tag match totally useless um, because it ended up everyone's in the match anyway. So WrestleMania has now got another new match. Uh, for a triple threat ladder match for the tag titles, which again, as a match goes, I quite like. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. Um, yeah. I, I do I want think, to see um, them retain them. But... I was going to say that the the one thing I didn't like about that segment was um, I got proper um, anonymous raw GM throwback vibes. Yeah, really I um, <laughs> I think it'd be a good storyline though if it come out that Michael Cole's corrupt and there's never been anyone telling him about these things. <laughs> he just does it all along. <laughs> he just it's been me the whole damn time. <laughs> I book what I want. <laughs> but um yeah, I, yeah. I, but it's because they're a fucking mess and they don't know how they want to put matches together. I, so there's someone telling Michael Cole to announce bookings. There's wrestlers making bookings themselves. There's celebrities suggesting bookings that ultimately get ratified. I honestly don't know what the fuck the plan is. How does it work? Who knows? It, yeah, weird. So that was SmackDown. The fighting continues and the, the show closes out, you know. Um, for me, personally, um, it was not bad. It wasn't great. It was better than Raw. So uh, I'll give it a three. A nice little a bar Raw, which was shit. Threes across the board for me. Um, I think so. I, I brought it out at a, a 2.5. So for me, it wasn't as strong as Dynamite. Um, it was better than Raw. And it was probably all in all, equal to NXT in terms of overall quality for me. Yeah, fair enough. That's a fair point. And um, Orange? Okay. Okay, nice. fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I, personally, I thought you'd go lower than that, but whatever. <laughs> oh, right, so, that is This Week in Wrestling. We've done it. It's over. 